get up, go into the bathroom, and weigh myself. Check the weight, check the body fat percentage. Go downstairs, eat my breakfast. Probably a quarter cup, half a cup of cereal with like a tablespoon of milk. Grab my lunch, go to school. Be in school, um, starving for the first few hours. If I wasn't hungry by around nine o'clock, I would know that I had eaten too much at breakfast so that the next day I would eat less. No snack, no, not allowed. Go to next class, hungry the entire time. 11.30, lunchtime. Why is it lunchtime? Because it's been four hours since I ate breakfast. Had to be four hours. Go to third block, hungry again, of course. Starving by two, 2.25. Go home, can't eat, wait till dinner. Eat dinner, serve myself, weigh myself, then go to bed. Wake up the next morning and do the same thing. When I did the show Twelfth Night, I would only eat like the salads or um, like carrot sticks or something whenever they brought us dinner. I wouldn't eat very much. So I went from 120 pounds to 116 pounds and I hadn't weighed that much probably since eighth grade and this was about my sophomore year. So it was kind of like, ooh, this is different. I feel more comfortable. I feel more secure. And so I didn't even consciously decide to start starving myself. It was more like, just don't gain those four pounds back. And then it got to the point where I was restricting so much that I started to lose weight. Even, even more weight than I ever intended because I never intended to actually keep losing and just it, and it turned itself into the disorder. From, from my understanding of like my personal perspective from my eating disorder, um, it went hand in hand with a thing called body dysmorphic disorder, which I think most people with um, eating disorders are affected by. When I would look at myself in the mirror, I would not see a difference, like not, could not tell that I was so thin. But the big thing that made me realize that there was something wrong was when my nails started flaking. And I would Google it and Google it and Google it and I kept trying to find an answer that wasn't the one that I knew was the reason. I kept on finding malnutrition, malnutrition, malnutrition. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no, it has to be something else, right? M my body itself told me everything that was wrong before my mind could recognize it. A lot of the time when you have this kind of disorder, when you have something like this, it's like an addiction. So it starts off with you thinking, oh hey, like this is gonna be something in my life that I can control and then it just gets out of hand and you can't stop it anymore. Mentally, I felt anxious, guilty, also unsatisfied, because no matter how many pounds I would be losing, I would still be looking at myself and be like, nope, not quite there yet. My family would try and confront me about it. When they would, it came out as anger and frustration instead of compassion and caring. My sister used to yell at me because she was she would just yell at me like, why don't you eat? You need to eat. I can remember almost every negative thing anyone has ever called me, but a lot of the positive things just like drift away. Those negative things would pound in my head at night. And I used to lie in bed when I was like 10 or 11 and just cry because I was like, why do I have friends? Why do people like me? I can't, I don't even like myself. And so trying to tell my family or trying to tell my friends, they couldn't comprehend why. And they would get frustrated with themselves because they couldn't understand and then they would get frustrated with me because they'd be like, why? What's wrong with you? Like, there's no reason why you should be feeling that way. And yeah, sure. There really wasn't a reason. The problem was that no one was willing to put their own logic behind and just listen to what I had to say. My family was noticing that I wasn't even eating my favorite foods anymore. The term is uh, fear foods. They became fear foods. The big thing 
that turned my life around and put me on the road to recovery was when um, I had really bad stomach problems. And so my mom ended up taking me to the doctor. I was five foot six and I weighed 100 pounds. She would show me my weight chart in this time period. It was like, oh, steady rising. And then it go like a complete line down. And she's like, well, we can't really figure out what's wrong with your stomach. So we're gonna have you go through a procedure, two different procedures. They said that I wasn't allowed to eat for two days. I had to fast for two days. And I had never gone that long without eating. Like even in my eating disorder, I had never actually starved myself that much. The doctor's like, if she doesn't gain weight within the two weeks before her next doctor's appointment, I'm holding her in for treatment. And that was terrifying. If I didn't gain weight in two weeks, I would have to stay in the hospital. The doctor told um, my mom that I have to start drinking nutrition shakes. In the little bottle, 350 calories. I would throw them away. I'd open them and like pretend to take a sip when I was driving with my sister to school. Close it up, be like, yeah, I'll finish it. She'd walk away and I'd be like, trash can, gone. I only did that a few times because I felt so bad. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? I just, I felt so guilty. And then after that, I just gradually started like taking my medicine of sorts and um, drinking them with every meal until the Global Youth Leaders Conference in Vienna, Austria. Because I was in the middle of my recovery, it actually made the trip a lot better because I could enjoy the food. They had these little mini cakes on the buffets, and they're like, Danny, that's, that's not gonna fit in your mouth. I'm like, try me, and I just went, and I'm like cracking up, and my face is covered in icing, and we're just, laughing and having so much fun. Today, I still have some image issues. I mean, it's gonna forever be a part of my life. When you grow up with that perspective, um, it can never really go away. Um, but can I see myself accurately now? Yeah, thank God. I feed myself really healthy foods and I eat whenever I'm hungry. And man, do I eat a lot of food. <laughs> It will get better. You just have to decide to make yourself better. You shouldn't look like anything but what you think is the best thing for you. Because we're getting so tired of a society that's controlled by appearances, that's controlled by uh, standards that are practically unrealistic. You judge your body by how your clothes fit. You judge it by how you feel inside your own skin. Happiness is not a number on a scale. Happiness is not a number on your pants. It's not the amount of hours you can go without eating. It's not the amount of calories that you can manage to get yourself to eat or not eat. It's being content with who you are as a person.